All right. So now we're going to get into some details. So, all right. So for vending machines, right? First question is, um, how much does a vending machine cost? So it can range. So, I mean, um, the cheapest you're going to find it is always going to be somewhere around $1,000 if you're using a used machine mm -hmm. versus if you're coming in with something new, you're looking at about five grand. Five grand for a brand new one. Brand like brand new, I didn't top, even, top uh, of the line so type of thing. New or used? I didn't even know that there, there were new or used machines. Um, how? Where do we even get this? Like, where am I finding a, a new machine? Where do I go? So, I mean, new machines you could get from like the man the manufacturers are actually making a lot like Coke, Pepsi, like those type of uh, places. You you could buy them straight from them. Those are where the new machines come from. And we're talking about actual what I mean. There's different types. Are we talking about food vending machines. So we're, we're talking about sodas, snacks. They do have food. They have ice cream machines. There's a lot of different different types. Okay. So if you're talking about used machines, which is you know I use used machines, and that's what I recommend everybody else to use, mainly because it's um, easier to maintain and it's a lot more affordable. Like the price is nowhere close to you know five thousand dollars. You can get a used machine for around nine hundred, which is which my first machine was. Okay. Um, and you can find those on places such as like Craigslist, um, OfferUp, Amazon, Let Go. It might be a little more on Amazon. Okay. And then the only reason I wouldn't I would say um, not to get it off like a, a platform where it's like online because I would recommend you checking the machine out first. You don't want to get it and get it in the, get it where you you know you don't know put it know. and then it's not working right and then you have to ship it back like that's a that's a long process. So, so you said Let Go. Yeah. Like, what, what's what's that? So it's an app. It's an app? Yeah, so let go, offer up, uh, Facebook market. Mm -hmm. um, but you, it just depends. That, and another thing is, it matters is how are, you, how, how are you trying to scale this? Do you want this to be on some side hustle, passive income stuff? Or do you want to grow it into like a full-time business? Because mm -hmm. if you're just doing it as a side hustle, just to earn some extra bread on the side, you know, using those resources such as like, you know, Crest is, is, is fine. But if you really want to do it like full time, you want to find like um, what I what I call vending warehouses. So a, a vending warehouse is just a vending company that is large enough to sell you vending machines. So that's kind of how we make our money on the back end. I might have some machines sitting around, and then I'll sell those um, to anybody who's looking to buy them. Where do you find vending warehouses? So you would have to Google vending machine companies in your area okay. and then contact them and see if they sell. So it's machines. all like regional, it's all regional. Yeah, yeah. So after I order, I'm thinking to myself right now, I'm ordering a machine, I probably need the location first, right? Because they're yeah. not gonna send that to your house, right? So do they send it to, what, what happens after I order it? So you could, you could pick the machine up first, but I, I, I recommend to people always, always, always get the machine after you have the location for multiple reasons because okay. if you go out and you get excited okay i'm going to vending thing i see a cheap soda machine this is a great deal you buy it mm -hmm. maybe you got it in your garage or something like that mm -hmm. you don't know what type of location you're going to get first so that means you don't know what that location is going to need maybe they already got a soda machine maybe they need a snack machine and maybe it won't fit <laughs> right and then that's another thing you don't know what uh the measurements are for that space they have to put the machine. So it could be the machine you make, you you could have maybe too big. Maybe it's too big to fit through the doorway. Maybe it's too big for the space that they actually want the machine. So it's always best to wait until you get that location, you know, on a uh, paper, and then you go out and get your machine. But on the flip side, you also want to know your resources first. Like you want to know where you're getting that machine from prior to you know finding your location so like what what's some typical are they like typical profit margins like how much money can should a person expect to make off of like one machine so an average a good a good location will see, you'll see around five hundred dollars for the foot per machine right most locations have two machines mm. you know what i'm saying unless it's like a combo if most of the time if you'll find a combo machine it's in a smaller in a smaller space because they can't fit two machines or it's because um Maybe it's a slower, it has slower traffic, lower traffic, and you don't want to put two machines in there, you know, that type of situation. So like a thousand dollars if you have two machines in one location. Yeah, that's about, that's like about a, right there. When you had to find locations, you obviously looked at your life. You said, look, I play ball here. I'm going to put one here. That's my high school. That's my barbershop. What does the average person have to do in terms of finding locations? So step one. Now, now to be honest with y'all, like I had experience and like different marketing before beforehand so i was already kind of seasoned seasoned with uh networking and and, and reaching people and calling and all that type of stuff so, wholesaling huh 
Huh? Were you doing wholesaling? Before? I did do wholesaling. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I oh, used, real estate. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I used those same type of tactics to find locations because I it was I learned a lot from actually going out and trying to find properties. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When I was doing the wholesaling thing. So the first thing I did was network. So I, I reached out to everybody around me, all my friends, all my family members, let them know what I was doing. And just through doing that, it led me to having like my first few locations. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I ended up getting um, a school, like, the, like you just named, which is my prior high school. Uh, I talked to them, you know, they, they let me uh, place a vending machine in there. And it led me to, you know, getting a few other spots. You know, I'm just thinking about it. A lot of places that I, yeah, they have two vending machines, yeah. like, like a community center, right. a school. Yeah, you have two vending machines. Yeah. Never thought, never thought about that before. From a, I mean, a or it's time to cut you yeah. off. You can have two vending machines right next to each other. Like one is sodas and drinks. Yeah. The other one is candies and chips and stuff. Yeah, they're always like right next. To right me. next to each other. Mm-hmm. So that, it, that's it, not bad if you think about it. Like a thousand dollars. That's like you could be getting rental income. Easy. But it's a lot less overhead as far as buying a home. Yeah. That, so that that was what I was gonna say. Two things. Well, first is. When these big corporations, like if I see a Coca-Cola machine, right, that's a vendor machine. Can I purchase that from it or is the corporation putting that in that location? Because you could have two vendor machines and then they have all Coke products. Mm-hmm. Can you purchase that? Can you purchase it from who? From like Coca-Cola. Is that like a, a thing? Can you get a vendor machine from a, a corporation? Mm, you, you're talking about as far as have if, if the machine is placed somewhere or if they're just manufacturing the machines. Well, like, so I'm thinking in terms of. I have my vending machine, you right? I have two of them there, and then there's like a Coke machine that oh, sells okay. Coke products. Is that something that like the average person can purchase, or is it just straight from the corporation? So, so all right, so Coke does. Coke actually places machines themselves. Okay. So, but they, what they'll do is they don't. They they actually just will place the machine, right? Mm-hmm. But the the thing is, the person they they would have to like charge a certain amount the uh, in products. So the products, you, once you buy a certain amount of products from from Coke, they'll play. They get you. They get a place of vending machine for free. Mm. So and then they'll service it or, or whatever. Like so, um, if you're talking about like if that machine is there, most more than likely your machine won't be there because they'll have some type of contract with Coca Cola, and they're not gonna let nobody else in there. So as far as location, because I, I know you said that um, you had a couple different keys: foot traffic, um, iso- isolation. Mm-hmm. Uh, waiting rooms uh so all of these different things but before you even get to that how do you approach somebody to put a vending machine in their place like all right so you you, you see a school like what's the process to say hey can i put a vending machine here can i talk to the principal like who do you yeah talk to? like how's that work so that's that's a good question man that's a lot of questions everybody asks but at the, all, all i really do is i'll approach whoever the receptionist is that they're that first point of contact and i'll ask them who I need to speak to to place a machine here. So is the, it's usually the person. Like everybody usually has a person who's in charge of doing business. Mm-hmm. So the high school has a you know a, a business manager. I had to talk to them. So if you're if I'm going into a motel or something, most of the time they have a business manager. You talk to them. So it's just about asking that first point of contact. Get you know obviously if you could find a manager or something like that, reach who you could reach, and but then ask that person who's the person who's that I have to talk to that actually makes the decision. So once you get in the high school or you get into the recreation center, is there a fee that you have to pay for being there? Or is it just part of the profit margin you have to give to the, the players? Like, how's that work? So it's all about, from my experience, it's all about how you get that plot, how you get that spot. Mm-hmm. So if you have, um, you have different resources you're using to get locations, mm-hmm. right? If one thing that you could do is you, out, you go out yourself and you actually look for locations like, um, you know, when we talk about uh, the whole side of things, it's called like driving for dollars. Mm-hmm. Like you heard of that term before, yep, right? Yep, yep. So that, that's a method you go out and drive around. I actually found the uh, laundry mat the other day, just driving around. I wasn't even looking for it, but I just happened to uh, see it. And actually, I put it on Instagram, so I put it on live. Yeah. Just to show people, like, this is like, you know, how easy it is to find something if you're paying attention to what's around you. Yeah. Um, so that's one method, and another method is like cold calling, which is you just make a list of multiple um, places in, that that may be uh, suitable for a vending machine in your uh, area that you're looking to place one, mm-hmm. like using zip codes or whatever, and you know, and you just call them. If you're doing that method, most of the time I found when you found a, like a location like that, they ask for a commission because you're asking to come into their space and right. do business, like you're asking for something from them. Yeah. yeah. Right now, on the flip side, you get a website, right? 
the top, the most the top the well the most common thing people do is when they're looking for vending services. If you you know you're just opened up your 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 uh, store, your business, or whatever it may be, it's Google. So they go right to Google vending machine service in Philadelphia. My joint is like one of the top ones on there. So you click on that, they um they call you, they contact you, and then they're gonna ask you to place a, a vending machine in their place of business. Oh, okay. So most not to, in that scenario, most of the time they don't ask you for a commission because they just want your service. They want your they service want you for their customers or for their um employees or for whatever reason. It's just like yo, we just want your service. We're not worried about commission. So okay. if you approach them, you got to pay them most of the time. If they approach you. You don't have to pay. Most of the time. Most of the time, that's how that goes. Now, it also depends on what type of place it is, you know, because if you're dealing with, like, recreation centers and schools, a lot of times those those facilities are, are um, like, the prob, the funds already. So they're always looking for different ways to supplement, you know, some income. So yeah. they're going to bring that up. So what kind drugs. of commission is fair? Like, if somebody, like, like, I'll let you put it here, but here's, you got to give me 20%, 10%. Like, what's a fair amount that... A, f- a, f- a fair amount really depends on the traffic in that location, but it typically is around 10%. 10%? Yeah, 10% is like, it's like a fair amount most of the time, if it's a good location. All right, so you, you, you sit down, you say, Let, we can have the, the vending machine here. What we do next? Are we drawing up a contract? Right, so on, at the point where they give me the person of contact, yeah. and they say they, they're interested, and they, we, I'll schedule a meeting with them. So we'll sit down like we're talking now. I'll have a um, proposal which is something I came up with just from doing the meetings and it's all the information is in the proposal which just cuts down the meeting time. So, you know, in there it's just about uh, your business, a little bit about yourself. You want to put the products that you use, what makes you different than other companies, um, your price points for your products, just present all that to them and then, you know, if they, if they like that, then I also have the contract there. So, and if they're good with the contract, you know, we sign it right there, do the deal right there. Now, sometimes it doesn't go that way. Sometimes they might want certain contingencies or whatever in, in the contract. So if they want that, then you you ask, you have, you know, obviously you have to go back and draw up a new contract yeah. and get them to sign that one. But, yeah, I'm thinking of like the school, right? Because I'm thinking like one yeah, of the contingencies like, they may have is like, mm-hmm. you can't serve um, a certain amount of sugary yeah, items. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. It has to be healthy options. Certain, certain products. And then it's like um, some people will want your actual service uh, hours in there or they'll want... Um, like if basically like if, if something goes wrong you have to repair it by this amount of time okay. type of thing like so that stuff is usually people usually tweak but for the most part they just go by what's on the paper so okay so as far as um let's go back to location so like you said you said foot traffic accessibility isolation and waiting rooms those are like your four golden mm-hmm. rules right oh in one second so and then the, the, for the commission thing i never bring up commission so never never sit down with a location and say all right well this is the amount that we pay in commission if they don't mention it, <laughs> oh yeah no, no i don't give them money yeah they, <laughs> no, 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 no. some people think that they'll, they'll, that's like they pitching like point is like we could pay you this much in commission but blah, blah, blah. Don't mention that <laughs> because it's not nec- no. That's a good. That's a good point because um, you might automatically assume that you have to pay because you're, you're in their space. Right. But like you said, it's kind of like an attraction where it's like, like my son goes to camp and every time I pick him up, he's right. like, "Can you give me something from the vending machine?" <laughs> so it's like you know what I'm saying. It's every like day. the vending machine is actually helping. Oh. In that situation, yeah, because it's, it's like service. people, something you might just walk into a space just to use the vending machine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that and I'm, now I'm thinking about from the business standpoint, having a school during the year is great. Having a recreation center during the summer, gold mine. Right. That's all kids want. Well, no. So recreation recreation centers during the the, the school year are good too because they have different programs, programs and, right, right, right. Yeah. and they have basketball games and stuff. We got some and recreation centers. To yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right. So, location, location, location is the most important thing with real estate. Period. And um, I guess this is no different from vending machine either, right? You got the best vending. You could be giving away gold bars if it's in the desert. It doesn't matter. So, how do you know what's a good? Lo- I mean, obviously. Well, I, I'm gonna say obviously. How do you know what's a good location or not? So, I mean, from what you just basically what you just mentioned, but I, I, I picked them up as time went on, just noticing different things. So, when I'm walking into a location, I, I go with a checklist. I don't really use it anymore because I kind of like know now, but it's best to have a checklist and use this. And this is what you want to look for. So, you want to look for um, when you pull up to the space, is there any stores around that building? So when I say isolation, that that's what I'm talking about. So I take a lap or two laps around. See, I'm looking for corner stores. I'm looking just for other places to eat. 
All right. So if, if if I don't see no other places to eat, I'm like, okay, so that's that's a good sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when I walk in the door, I'm looking um in terms of moving, I'm looking for steps and all that type of stuff cuz you have to move the machine in there. But in terms of what makes it a good location, I'm um I'm looking to see where the machine will be placed. All right. So I'm like, all right, well, is it placed somewhere where it's visible and people can see it? Because I had one situation where I had a, it was a hotel wanted me to put a machine in there, but they wanted the machine like in the in the back, way in the back where nobody would see it. And on the flip side, I had a, um, so a gas it. station right next door. So when I was watching, I'm watching people come in and they just making the left, turn right out, go right to the gas station. I'm yeah. like, no, it's not stopping Because the, the, ga- the gas station is the place now that they're going to get that the snacks they see. from. They see the gas station because yeah. it's right, because it was a big glass you know, door, obviously, and it's right there. Right. Versus if that machine was placed in the lobby, they just would have used the machine. They, right. Nobody wants to walk all the way over there if you ain't got to. Only the night shift. Right. So, <laughs> so you know, that's that's real important. It's important is, is it being visible and it uh, being accessible to everyone. So if everybody can use it, if it's visible, that that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, another thing I'm looking for is uh, hours of operation. So how long is this place open? Like you said, night shift, some places are open 24 hours, mm-hmm. right? That gives you more sales versus it only being open for- Nine uh, to five. Nine okay. to five, like so that's another, that's another yeah. important Cafeteria piece. closed now. Yeah. Right, so, um, and then probably the last thing I'm looking for is, um, foot traffic right which is one of this is the most important thing you want to see how many po- employees they got how many people are visiting this place how many people are in and out coming past this machine yeah one of the things you said and as you said it i was like wow that's brilliant places that have ideal time where people are just waiting so i was like a hospital but when you just said laundry man i'm thinking like oh my gosh yeah. yes <laughs> like people yeah. are sitting in there all day watching machines go yeah, no, right. laundry mats are big, schools are big, yeah. recreation centers are big, hospitals are big. Hospitals are huge. Um, I'm thinking that's the number one. Yeah, office yeah, office yeah. buildings are, are big. Dorms. Dorms, dorms yeah, college, college dorms. Campuses. College dorms are big. These are just yeah. Big. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. To name a few. And to give an give a example, um, is, is Temple. We have a Temple dorm. Um, guy I was doing business with, that location does around 3,500. A, a, a month. month? How it's many machines? Two, how many machines? Two machines. Two. You know what? I mean, college kids don't have a lot of money, and they don't have the transportation. So if you put the vending machine, right and that's that's you. That's your machines. This these two, those two are mine. It's the okay. guy. Actually, I know we were talking a little okay. off camera. Yeah. So another guy, one of my first, my first mentee. Okay. I helped him find a spot, and that was the spot that we got. Damn, thirty five hundred. That's that's good bread. Right. Two machines. Mm-hmm. Two two machines. Thirty five hundred. And then on top of that. Since that building is the, built the way it built, it could be more machines placed in there. And you said there's, there's a difference in what, I mean, the older machines don't have something that's very important that you said, and that's the card readers, right? Because now a lot of people don't have cash, but they do have cards to use. So what we do is we'll take the older machines and add upgrades to them. So we might change the door. We might use uh, what we call like the LED lighting. So, you know, the little light strips, put that in the door, it makes mm-hmm. it a little brighter. Yeah. And we can add the car readers, but we would just have to change what, what's in there. It's called a circuit board. Okay. Expensive? A circuit board costs about $200. Oh. Car readers are about 400 So cool. you're looking at, to use that is about additional $600. But on the flip side, those usually increase your sales by at least 30 40%. Mm-hmm. Like so, you know, it's worth it actually getting those on there if you know you plan on doing it on a, a serious note. So, okay. So as far as installation, right? How do you know which products to put? So you just buy a, a machine and you can put anything in the machine, correct? A- anything you want. How do you know which products do you do? Like, okay, I like Doritos, so or like, how do you t- how do you know like which is a good product? Yo, to put? <laughs> that's a, that's an excellent question because my all right. So my first location that I got when I when I said it was only um, doing only a few a few dollars or whatever, I was putting in there what I like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I had what I like. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm walking through Sam's Club like, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. But after a while, I was like, no, you you have to put in what they want. So what I like to do is on my first, if I, if it's an office building or something like that, I'll use a newsletter. And I'll send out a newsletter introducing my services and I'll give them an opportunity to put to tell me what they want in the machine. Mm. That's like step one. Mm. Other than that, it really comes down to demographics. Like this you know, <laughs> certain certain demographics, certain you groups, no avocado toast in there. So certain groups of people like 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 certain things. So from my experience, I know if I'm dealing with a, a mostly like Caucasian group, they tend to like more of like the plain chips and like the <laughs> 
<laughs> no, for real. They no spice. Like more, no spice. More of the plain where though. If I'm going to other, it might be more like, you know, the flavorful barbecue type. <laughs> Type so, of so you got so, takis in there. Yeah, man. It just depends. It depends where you at. It depends where you at. But it's, it is definitely best to always let the people tell you what they want. And the inventory you're actually going to get, right? So right. like you are going to these warehouses. I'm assuming. Are you so not I, at the supermarket. I go to I go to Sam's Club. Okay. So I go to most. I mostly shop at Sam's Club. Um, but I do have a, a warehouse that I go to to get products. Now the thing with Sam's Club is. It's good if you're just doing it like small scale, but if you're buying like variety boxes of chips and whatnot, yeah. they're going to put a few, they're going to put the good chips in there, then they're going to put like a yeah, bullshit they ass. Do that. They always you know, do that. Selection in there. And that's and the that, one that never sells. And that, right. And that's the one that's not going to sell. So yeah. when you're doing that you know, on a larger scale, you have to keep buying those boxes and boxes. It's like, all right, well, that's not, that's that's losing, making me lose money. Yeah. So when you get to a certain point, you could just cut that out. And then if you go find a, a source, you have to find a source. You could just get the straight fire products, but it's, you have to buy it in a larger quantity. Mm -hmm. So that box of it, Sam's Club comes in a box of uh, 30 most of the time. Mm -hmm. Whereas though, if I buy that in the larger quantity, I got about 64, a box of 64 of all one selection, mm. which is going to cost you more money because now you have to put that, that, that variety box, going, it's going to take about four or five rows because there's different chips in there yeah. versus it just being one whole box of one product. That's only one row of a product. How, how often are you changing uh, the machines? Weekly. 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 Okay. Yeah. So if, I mean, if if you're doing it more than more than once a week, you probably need a bigger machine. If you're if you're not doing it once a week, you probably need a smaller machine. And um, like so, how do you know what to charge? Cause you can charge anything. I just yeah. I just found that out. You, you can charge anything. Right? The prices. Yeah. You set you set all your own prices. Um. And it, once again, it just comes down to demographics. It comes down to the region, the area you you actually you know working in. I know if we're over here in New York, my candy bars are going to be about two dollars. <laughs> like, but if I'm in Philly over there, it's going to be about one twenty-five. But the main thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at my internal on investment, like my R, um, ROI. ROI, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, um, if I'm spending X amount, I want at least double that. So at minimum, I'm doubling when I'm paying for the products. Okay. But I'm actually, well, I always try to reach uh, like to triple. I try to you know get the three hundred percent mark of what I'm actually paying back. Uh, what I'm actually paying for the product. So whatever I'm investing, I'm trying at least. So if I, if I buy a candy bar for a dollar, I need to I need to charge three dollars in the vending machine. Just using that as like an example, yeah, yeah, rough yeah, example. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. you're not gonna charge three dollars for a candy bar, but right. I'm just saying they did that at my, at, at my job. Like I went to <laughs> the vending machine, and the sixty-five cent bag of chips is now five dollars. I'm is, like, it, is it really I'm like, I'm five dollars? I'm gonna send you the picture. I was like, no, nah, this is a joke. Right? Im impossible. I'm gonna send you the picture. It was ridiculous. I'm like, wait, huh? It's impossible. Yeah, I'll yeah. send you the picture. Yeah, no joke. So, I'm like, this is ridiculous. What kind of chips are they? Sal's? You ever eat those? You know Sal's chips? No. What, how big is the bag of chips? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sixty, like the, the normal sixty-five cent bag of chips. Nah, it's impossible. So it's like a, the two ounce bag. Of one, nah, it's like I'll, one point seven or something. I will send y'all the picture. Man. Nah, it's impossible. Yeah, ridiculous. That's, yeah, that's crazy. But they do, you know, people do do that. I mean, they not. Now I never seen five dollars. <laughs> I seen that's like, like the you know, airport. That's more expensive. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah. If you that's, get a yeah, location like the pricing. airport or like the hotels, you could really charge more for those. Oh, you get a oh yeah, vending machines in the airport. Yeah. that's that's where you make money. Yeah. Airport so, prices is just ridiculous, just cause it's not right, airport. Just for the it's food, the though, airport. because now they got the the vending machines that sell electronics. Too. Yeah, so that's and that's another thing I wanted to touch on too. Is like you could think outside the box and get creative. You could sell anything out of a vending machine. You cool. could sell. Electronics. Uh, somebody I found online was selling knickknacks out of them in the, in the, in the airport, and she was making eight thousand dollars a year. Oh, wow. what, what's, a, what, what, what's a knickknack? So like the, the the stuff that you know you might get while you're in that city or whatever, like those okay. type, those little whatever, like the little trunkets and like little. Like it was Welcome like little, to little, LA. Little, I, I yeah, love New York little things. Charms and stuff yeah. like that, and she had like balled up T-shirts in there, like you know making making good money, like just thinking outside the box. Um, I also it's like, see it's like the sneaker one. Like nobody yeah, ever wins sneakers. the sneaker one, but you put two dollars yeah. to try to do it every time. Right. Like so, it's, it's a lot of different things you could you could put in there if you could really like get creative with it. What's the craziest one you've seen? <sighs> craziest one? Uh, you had one on your page when Dubai. They have gold bars. Yeah, I haven't seen that one though. But yeah, I've seen like oh, you got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a yeah. Vans gold bars. You could buy, you could buy gold bars <laughs> right. for pieces of gold. I don't know why you want to buy it, but you know that's just to buy everything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the vending machine and get some gold, yeah. Yeah, but you know it's a lot. It's of, a lot of crazy ones out there, man. I've seen some where you they selling water. I seen pizza. It's a pizza. I, I did. Machine. There was a new. There was an article about that. They put that on college campuses where uh, it makes a pizza in like ninety seconds or something. Uh, um, they had a Plan B machine. 
<laughs> on college campus. On another college campus. Side side of campus. <laughs> I, I forgot, and, it, and, it, and it's actually not far from here. Yo, that that's actually, is. honestly, honestly. The contraception machine. No, that's not a bad idea. No, that's, the contraception machines are not a bad idea. You have condoms. They used to put them in a the bathroom. Remember you used to put a quarter and then you, y'all don't remember I that? never seen that. Nah, I haven't it's seen that. School. It's a little old school. It's like you put a quarter and you get a contraception. Mm, I, condom. that. Wow, yeah, yeah, is that was that even legal to have a point? Because those, yeah, well, all right, I different know. I know, I know, I know. They got them out there. And then the it's like the um, like hair weave and eyelashes. So you know what? Um, what about medical marijuana? Oh, just marijuana. Yeah, period. That too. They got those out in California. They got the medical. Yeah. So I'm I'm not exactly sure how those operate because yeah. you know that's that's regulated. So you need ID and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. security at that yeah, machine. Probably. So, yeah. Yeah. That's little, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's a little yeah. different. But uh, they do have those out there. What about vandalism? Like if somebody de- destroys your machine, um, how does that work? You have insurance on it? Or yeah, I haven't. I, I I had that happen before once, but um. Yeah, so basically, if somebody destroys it, messes it up, you just, if you got insurance on it, then you cover it. If not, you know. And who, you can uh, go through any insurance company, Geico, State Farm, anything like Liberty? I'm not sure if it's any. I know State Farm um, is, is one. But yeah, it's just regular, regular insurance companies cover it. Is it pricey? Uh, no, it's not pricey at all. It's not pricey at all. So you would recommend always having that? I would recommend, I would definitely recommend having insurance. But the thing is, when you actually go through the process of picking out a good location, if you're meeting the criteria, it's hard to do vandalism because if the machine is somewhere open and somewhere is, you know, if it's in that, and if a place is always, you know, has long hours, most of the time they have security. And most nine times out of 10, that's, that vending machine is somewhere near that security, like mm. wherever it's sitting at in the lobby somewhere. It's so it. it's always going to be somewhere where people where people see it. And like it's always, if it's foot traffic, it's going to be, if it's good foot traffic, then people are always going to be around. So it's hard to vandalize, yeah. um, you know, machines. Or if some place with cameras. Yeah. Yeah, like a school or community center, right. something like that. Mine's, mine's happened more so when um I had it in that motel we was talking yeah. about. Shut down. <laughs> yeah. that, when it shut down, it was like when I went back, it, it was over. What's the what's the lifespan of a machine? That's a great question. I mean, I have some machines I haven't had any issues with like since I had, mm-hmm. and some of them you get is just like problems. I had one machine in particular that's. It's always giving me a problem. I actually switched it out recently. What, what type of problems? Like the, the mechanical doesn't dispense the m- merchandise. Like no. So a vending machine really is only about it's about three parts. You got your your uh, bill accepted. And a lot of people think like, oh, what about that's that's one of the questions I get a lot too. What about the cost of maintenance? I don't really maintenance. The cost of maintenance isn't high at all. Like it's really like it's rare that something goes wrong with those machines. But you got your bill accepted. Your um, coin mechanism, which is where you put the coins in, mm-hmm. and then you have your um, your board. So your board is like the thing; everything is connected Let's to. Press E four. No, but that, yeah, basically, but that that runs to a, a little board that's inside the vending machine, okay, okay. right? And those are the main three parts. The, now the coins and stuff don't really like those are ran by little motors, but those don't really go bad. Okay, um, those are typically okay. But the with the, uh, the the thing that gets the most use. Is the bill acceptor because people are always putting the bills in there or whatever um i probably switch that out probably every like maybe like two years or something but if you're if you're taking care of it the right way you won't have to do that I, i'm bad at that part but you know you could have um you could order a thing off amazon it's like a little sticky it looks like a sticky uh card you put it in there and then pull it out and it pulls all the dirt and stuff out of the uh, mm-hmm. the bill acceptor which helps it keep keeps it clean because what's in there is it's a reader so once that reader gets uh, too like dirty or too uh, like you know beat up, it doesn't work anymore. So like, how do you? All right. So the money you collect just you know you go in there, but like the credit card, how that gets that goes that and that processed and that goes like directly to like a PayPal account. It goes directly to a bank account. The bank account. Yeah. Oh wow! So yeah, every so, time somebody uses a credit, it goes right in. Well, it goes. It doesn't go right in. It goes to um, that that service. It goes to that providers. Okay. Um, account, then they have a payout. Date. Similar, pay similar, okay, right. similar to what you would use, like with like a Shopify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like a pay, your, yeah. You all choose right. your payout date, yeah. and then on those dates you get paid out for whatever car reader sales that you had. What What about the process of buying and selling routes? I know sometimes you said that if there is a slow time, you might want to sell that machine or sell that route. Can mm-hmm. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I mean, in the business, you know, you obviously the bulk the bulk of your money is going to come from you selling products out of your machine. But it's also other ways to make money once you get going, um, which one of the best ways is, like you just said, buying and selling routes. So I might, um, like for the perfect, the perfect scenario, the best scenario I had with buying, uh, buying a route and selling it was, I brought a, um, a route for 3500 Now originally the guy was trying to charge me like 
seven thousand for it or something like that. I was like, no, I'm okay. I'm not even really in yeah. desperate need. I'm not really looking for anything. But um, you know, he couldn't sell it, so he came back to me. He was like, you know, I still got this route. I'll give it to you for thirty five. And I'm like, okay. So I'm looking at it. It's six. It's six vending machines, and it's three locations. So I'm like, man, it's that's that's like a giveaway. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll take it for thirty five. Um, so I brought it. I checked out the locations. Two of the locations I didn't I didn't like. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this this location is bad, but it was good machines in there. The other location was bad. One location was good. So. Uh, what I did was I kept the good location and I sold the other two locations for thirty five apiece. Mm. So I ended up making um, a profit of seven thousand off of that situation. Yeah. So that's just another way to make money on the back end. So if you're into buying routes, yeah, like you could just buy a route out. Maybe set, you could you could keep the machines, you know, sell the machines, or you could just try to sell the machine on location, which is easier to sell them if they already placed. Like that, that takes work off for the next man. Is there any way to get a machine for free, like financing or pay it back on the back end through money that you make in the future or no? It's a great question. So you you can rent machines from the same type of people that I talked about before as far as like with the, uh, if you're going through a vending warehouse, they do allow you to rent machines sometimes. If you look online, you can find some people that rent machines as well. I don't really suggest doing it because it gives you like an overhead you know, well, you know, if that that's your way in, then that's your way in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But um, you could also um, once you, once you get to a certain point in the business, um, like like I mentioned before, with, with Coca Cola and mm -hmm. Pepsi, with one of the one of the programs that they have is once you buy a certain amount of their product, they give you machines. Oh, so, yeah. but it has to be on contract. Mm -hmm. So, like when you say like buy, buy their products, like so you're putting their sodas in your machine. So you, right. you got to so, buy like ten thousand so dollars worth of Coke. <laughs> It's not ten thousand dollars, but it's like it's definitely um, a, a good amount, and you have to buy. You have you're committed to buying that amount at least at minimum every month. But they'll give you the vending machine for free because obviously it's you helping them. Product. It's yeah. helping you move that product, you know. But that's a way to get free vending machines too. But that's not. We probably won't do that until like you know later down the line. Right. What about the, the the contracts? What are the typical lengths of the contract? Is it like six months? Is it a year? About two years. I do two years. Two year contract? Yeah, two two year increments. So. All right. Well, that was a lot of information yeah. for sure. So in the next segment, we're going to bring it home. All right. So uh, we're going to close it out. But before I, I got I got a few questions. So, all right. Especially in schools and with kids and stuff like that. What's your thoughts on because child, childhood obesity is a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your thoughts on like junk food? Because you can have healthy stuff in there as well. Obviously, it's not as popular. Do you ever think about that? Or? Yeah, that's something that actually comes up a lot of times in the meetings, like when I'm talking to like the uh, potential locations. So they'll, they'll, they, you know, they always want the healthy selections, which I'm big on healthy selections anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely want to give people a choice. Um, so I like to put half traditional, and then I put half healthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I tried the whole health thing one time. <laughs> it ain't it work. It didn't go that well. It didn't go that well. So I, I definitely do. I do um, like like so my. Most of the time, a vending machine will have multiple rows of, like two rows for chips, two rows for uh, snacks, and then you got your candy roll or whatever. So on my top one, I make half of that, um, like baked or something like, you know. Like a power bar, something like that? Not not well, no, no. not for the chips, the but like this, yeah, like something big oh, or okay, something yeah. like oh, less for chips, fat. okay, yeah. And then once we get to like the uh, the snack, I mean the uh, candy roll, I'll just make sure it's like some uh, healthy stuff like trail mix, or uh, yeah, like a power bar. So just something, something that's you know it'd be good for something somebody to grab quick that's still healthy for you. And depending on where you're at, right? Like that, you have that you have to take that into account as far as inventory, because like you said in Philly, I got a sugar tax, mm -hmm, right. right? So when buying stuff, you got to take that into account right. too. And we also have a, also have a, a old people's home, so you know in there I can't put a lot of sugar stuff. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on where you're putting that machine at. But it definitely it definitely always comes. Up in the conversation when you're placing a machine, is having healthy selections. Everybody, everybody wants healthy selections, and I think that's more so a big wave now. Yeah, yeah now, yeah. In the direction that we're going yeah. as a, as a you know, country, as a country, yeah. is, is getting more healthy stuff out there. So, 
you know. Yeah. yeah. You are the food source for a lot of us. Like, we, we don't have, a lot of us don't have time to go out for lunch. It's like, yo, let me just grab something quick. Right, and you want to make sure they at least got the choice to get something healthy versus yeah. having to get something, you know, it's not good for you. So, well, like, ramen noodles and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> I've seen that in there. I, yeah. I, I had those in there. So, um, like, noodles, yeah. do, what's, the, what's, what's your sweet spot? Like, cause I know you said you don't like perishable goods for obvious reasons because mm -hmm. they expire. Does candy expire? Yes. It has an expiration date. It's yeah. a long one, though. Yeah. Like, a long, like a long time, though, right? Yeah, it takes a while. But it really, it depends on the uh, conditions, like your temperature and all that. So if you, yeah. in the summertime, Snickers bar in the sun, they ain't going to last too long. Because once it, once it resets, most of the time when it resets and into being like the regular form, so, it's like um, like not really molded, but it's just like discolored and it doesn't okay. look appealing for people to eat. They're not going to eat it. So you try to have your, your but it's always inside, though, right? You try like air conditioned. Most gotta, of the time it's in them, but I'm, I'm more so talking about like storage. So it okay. depends where you're storing your stuff okay. at too. I never thought about that. You got to store it. Do, do you store it or you yeah, do, do, you just, do you just buy it as you go? I store it, but when I first started, I was just buying it as I go. So your, but, li your living room was full of boxes? No, so I got a spot in my crib where I, where I like something similar to like this area here, yeah. but like a little smaller, that whole area was full with snacks. Okay. But you know, if you buy it as you go, it's a little easier. But once you get it down to a science, so the thing about buying it as you go is you gotta take trips to the store every week. Like so, <laughs> you, know, you really want to figure out how much you need so you could just buy your month's worth and then have it just sitting over there in the corner. So all you gotta do is grab the stuff and go fill up the machine versus multi making multiple trips. So a full time day is like, all right, I'm gonna schedule. I'm gonna go to this location to refill. This location to refill. Yeah. So it's like, all right. So I do my the day before. I'll prep. Fill up all, um, fill up all my my bins. I have bins that I carry the products in. Mm -hmm. Fill up all my bins. Um, pick the spots I'm going to. Just knock the spots down one by one. But I, I do. I, I pack everything the night before. Now that's a one man show. You doing this by yourself? Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I saw you said like as far as the um, the numbers on it. So it's like I think it's like under six locations is. Is well under six machines. Let me see if I have this written down somewhere. It's like passive, passive, mm -hmm. and then yeah. Can you explain that? Like the numbers. So it really now honestly it depends on your location. Okay. Like, obviously, but we're talking about this standard average. Like if you have around six machines, that's kind of still passive. Like that's not going to take up too much of your time, and um, you know you can still get whatever done. Once you get to like uh, around like ten machines. You more so like on like a part time type of thing. Like if you was working part time, because mm -hmm. it's going to take up a little more time as far as you keeping up with your products and you going to your spots, depending on how far your spots are. Once you get past like 15, that's more like a, uh, you know, once you get like 15, 20, you, you're well, like a real into like business, a, a full time, full -time situation. Yeah, like now you're now you're doing that full time. Like you're making, you should be if you're doing it right, you should be making good money. But that's going to take up a lot of your time. So if you have twenty, if you have twenty machines, theoretically, you you, you should be making like fifteen thousand around that. At, at least at least twenty on the good end. At least fifteen at minimum. At minimum, you should at least be doing like ten, even if you don't have good locations. Like you should at least like, be, now, at least ten right? a month. Ten right, right. Now the but, thing about the vending machine thing is, is this an interesting situation because um it's one of these things where. I always say it's never about home runs. It's never about home runs in life. It's about base hits. Like if you play baseball, you got to get base hits consistently. Mm -hmm. And the vending machine thing is like a base hit. Like even if you got you know a couple going and you're getting two thousand, like that's that's two thousand. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Three thousand, whatever. It's like now nah, that takes pressure off of you. That's a nice passive stream of income. Mm -hmm. You build that up. You know, however large you want it to grow, but it's one of these right. things that's extremely practical. Everybody has seen vending machines or used it, <laughs> or used it. Yeah. It's not rocket science, and it it's not really that difficult as yeah. far as to understand the, the general idea of it. I think people think in their minds like, oh, somebody spent a dollar, somebody spent a dollar twenty five. It's not a lot of money, but no dollars make sense. No, you know what? It's not even about that. <laughs> a lot of times we just mentally price out, we just mentally psych ourselves out of any, everything. So it's like you see a vending machine every single day. How many people have ever thought about owning a vending machine? Right. I've never thought about it. You right. see it? Why not? Right. Somebody owns it. You're getting killed every summer. <laughs> somebody owns it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like why not? Yeah, and I think a lot of people shy away from it too. Like even when they think about that idea, it's like they're scared of like the maintenance. They be thinking, okay, well, I don't know how to fix it. But you know, at the end of the day, you, it's not it's not too complicated. But for any business, you're going to have hurdles where you have to figure stuff out. 
it's no different than that. Like so, once you once you get it going and you run into an issue, of course um, you have to. I mean, YouTube is your friend. You can yeah. probably can find a solution on YouTube. If not, find a resource to call in and just watch what they do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and most of the time, you know, that's that's how I learn how to fix machines. Yeah, are they like, I'm going to ask you that. Like, do you fix it yourself or do you hire, like, mechanics that specialize in vending machines? So, for the most part, I fix it myself. The only thing I really I can't fix is um, the refrigeration units. It's called the compressors. So, the compressors are a little more complicated. I don't know how to fix those yet. But, like, the bill scepters and the coin mechanisms and, like, that, that type of stuff... I can fix those because it's like a, it's a common thing. Um, and that's most of the time, nine times out of ten, that's what you're going to be dealing with. If something goes wrong, most of the time it's just like a dollar got stuck or maybe your, your uh, bill acceptor went bad. It's just screw it out, uh, put a new one in, screw it back in, like that type of thing. What's the best What's the best item in vending machine history? Peanut M&M's. Peanut M&M's. Right. For snacks, uh, <laughs> for drinks, uh, Pepsi. Man, Pepsi sells like that combo like, together like, is like classic. No, like nothing else. <laughs> Peanut M and M. You got yeah. whatever, whatever you sell on everything else. Pepsi get, is gonna sell double. I'm a candy right? guy. Peanut Pepsi sells more than Coke. Pepsi sells more than anything. Pepsi like, really? Well, everywhere. Like, I, everybody I know would do it. Pepsi. More than water? Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah, largest profit item, though, item is water though. Yeah. You make the most off of water. Off of water. Yeah. But Pepsi sells like nothing else. Peanut M and M sells real well too. What, what's, what's your favorite? My favorite uh, Skittles, Starburst, and Peanut M and M's. Yeah. Peanut, those, those I don't even know if I even had peanut M and M's. I don't like them personally, yeah, like, and that's them. and that's what kind of messed me up the first time around. I was like, oh, these ain't good. But you nah, know, man. when I was stocking the them, combination but, of the Pepsi and the peanut M and M, butter yeah, butter, that's crunch, a, that's butter, a butter crunch, that's butter crunch, butter crunch cookies. That's not in every vending machine, though. It should be. Those are <laughs> smack. Payday, payday candy bars. No, no, that, that's a, that's a niche thing. And oil and vinegar chips. That's mm. another niche chip. Mm. What are you talking no, about? that's so a niche oil, chip. oil and vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> like, like oil and vinegar. <laughs> that's the chip that gets. That's not niche. That's no, 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 no. Oil and vinegar is elite. That's Bro, elite. That's elite. The lace. No, 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 no. Red bag of Doritos. Yeah, class. That's gone. Yo, yo, those are moving. The po- the black popcorn chip bag. That's another item. Plain. The, no, the cooler ranch. Plain. Cooler ranch. Plain. Uh, not really Lay's. Uh, people like well, and where I'm at, people like the uh, hers, like plain hers. <laughs> they, like, they love those. Yeah. More, more so. Plain chips, Doritos, uh-huh. um, pretzels also. Pretzels, well. pretzels uh, depending on where they at. Yeah. But the Doritos, the um, peanut M and M's. Pepsi, that's selling no matter, no matter. I call those like staple items. Like those Got items it. will be in the machine no matter which of them ever have. I see sometimes they'll put like the M&Ms in one row and then like put them at the next row too just because. Because they sell like, because if, if you don't do that, you're going to run out. Like so that that's going to run out. Before. It's like with Pepsi. You know, most of the time you had two rows of uh, Pepsi in the machine. Just because. Just because it's going to sell faster yeah. than anything and else. And you have to come back once it sells out. Right. It, you might even have to come back. It's just going to sell out and then you'll be... And you could be losing out on money if that person only came to that machine to get, that. to get some peanut M and M's. They like, oh, well, I don't want nothing, and type you, of thing. Are you moving into other uh, things to to put in the vending machine? Like, is there is there other items that you see in the future? Like, you know what, I might want to go that route. No, I like I like keeping it traditional. But I do see, you know, I, I see a lot of things. You know, I see people coming up with that's real creative. Um, I see some celebrities coming out with different ideas. I know Kylie Jenner just launched like a vending machine with one of them had makeup? champagne and Skittles. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. The other one had like a make her makeup line, which I know is big. That's not a bad idea either. Makeup, little stuff like that, like chapstick and things like that. Yeah. Where it's like you on the run. That's not a bad idea. But yeah, you're never gonna lose with beverages, especially beverages. People always drink stuff. Yeah. And candy. It's kind of like it's like a no brainer. In the words of Mike, I'm addicted to candy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, they always gonna be in business with me. My graduates from my school being Forbes, bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> <laughs> Mike drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>